to feel free from the need to be. Hmm? To, to be free. Yes. That to be free point. even from the need to be free. Right. That's a paradox that's, and yet it sounds it's like a paradox. That's, uh, that's to feel effect. free from the need to be free. Yes, there is nothing there wow. to be free from. Good day. My name is Luke Sala and today we're going to talk about everything, basically from disease to divinity, with U.G. Krishnamurti. He is of Indian origin, was brought up in the tradition of the Theosophical Society, but in fact since 50 years, and coincidentally, it's about precisely 50 years yesterday, he is like independent from that tradition of the Theosophical Society. Although many people will think that his name, Krishnamurti, refers to the other Krishnamurti. And in fact, the two Krishnamurtis did knew each other. But he's here in Amsterdam to talk about a range of subjects, and really everything is free, as he said. And uh, we would call this from disease to divinity. And uh, UG, welcome here. Thank you. Uh, this is also 50 years being been, in Holland? I have been coming to this country 15 years. I happen to be here exactly the same day I came 50 years ago. At that time, I was involved with the Theosophical Society, and I was uh, uh, given this, uh, what is the title, designation, or whatever you want to call it, International Lecturer of the Theosophical Society. I was only 35 years old at the time, and I gave an address there in Huizen. See? Yes, yeah, they have a big center there. Big center, I don't know it's a, if it is still there. I it's just still there. I to go and have a look at it, not for sentimental reasons. I don't believe in nostalgia of any kind. But anyway, you see, I happen to be here, and then how it is like, I wouldn't even go inside, you see. I have nothing to do with it. And once something is thrown out of my system, yeah. it is finished once and for all. Yeah. But I'm, it seems you have, when you were younger, you did a lot of work on... Everything. Everyone, everything. You read a lot, but since 50 years you say, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I am my own thinker, and whatever traditions you, you throw it out of the window. They're thrown out of my system, completely and totally. Not just the theosophical uh, background, but everything India stood for. Not only that, when so many people, scientists, nuclear physicists, psychologists, all of them come to see me, you know. And uh, I don't accept anything that is born out of human thought. You see, it is most too destructive. But we have a tremendous investment in the thought. You see, thought is the enemy of us all. Thinking, you say, is not... It sounds like you say, it's a computer and we don't need it. We don't need it. This is automatic, it is so mechanical. And we are not ready to accept that we are just automatons and just mechanical in our functioning and that we are just animals. And the human animal is something extraordinary with an extraordinary intelligence, unparalleled in any living organism on this planet. But we have been made to believe that we are born for some grander and nobler purposes than all the other forms of life, and that everything that is there around us is created for, for our us. benefit. That is why we have created all this mess in this world. So if human species wiped out from this planet, nothing is lost for this planet. You say humanity compared to ants or whatever. Yeah. Is that an extremely we, positive or it's extremely a very negative? very positive statement. You see, it is very comforting for you to think that it is a negative statement. But uh, you are not ready to accept that we are no more important than the mosquitoes that bite us. You know, the female mosquitoes need the hemoglobin to give continuity. Male mosquitoes don't come anywhere near us. So our usefulness is only f for the female <laughs> mosquitoes. <laughs> you know, and we will be more useful to nature than dead than alive. You see, we are destroying so many other forms of life. So we you, you basically say that this homocentric thinking yes. that is the, the idea that our brain is better than the brains of yeah. ants or, or mosquitoes yes. now they have found is a wrong a way. Wrong way, and we are made to believe that that is so. And we have tremendous investment in those people who come up with these ideas. 
and we think that they know what they are talking about. They don't know what they are talking about. They are fooling themselves and fooling us all. The same thing that all the great religious teachers have done to mankind. They believe that they were all enlightened people, that they are there only to enlighten all the people. We are interested in having all that we have today, all this plus something more. That is what they are offering, all this in heaven. But there is no such thing as heaven, and we are not ready to accept this is all that is there, and we are not ready to accept the fact that all this is going to come to an end when what you call death occurs, you see. So you say there's, like what the Theosophical Society believes, there is afterlife. What the, there is reincarnation. The, the Hindus also believe in reincarnation. I was only 14 years old when we attended the Golden Jubilee of the Theosophical Society with my grandfather. And the Hindus believe in reincarnation, you see. And uh, so when all this, there were about 3,000 delegates from all over the world. And when they first meet, you see, I am Yuji Krishnamurti, what is your name? And then they introduced themselves in a very strange way. I was Queen Victoria in my past life, what were you? And I found out they exhausted all the historical figures, all the spiritual figures, even the stars were not available to me, you know? So nothing was left for me. And so that finished my interest in reincarnation. <laughs> I tell all the people in India, that uh, they have invented a thing called reincarnation to make people believe that all their sufferings are due to what they did in their past life. If I am a beggar, they tell me that you did something terrible in your past life, and so that is why you have become a beggar, and you have to depend upon the charity of the people, so they feel guilty because they have stolen everything that rightfully belongs to everybody, and they give only to keep him there forever. Otherwise, he will come and blow us all up. We are not ready to accept our way of theory, mm -hmm. our kind of uh, stealing everything, and we have created the police force to protect us. And if the policeman cannot protect me, I have an army, a navy, air force, and we have nuclear weapons to maintain our own status quo and our way of life and our way of thinking. And so, they have invented such a clever thing to keep them where they belong. You see, you did something terrible in your life, and so you have to suffer in this life and make a virtue of that suffering. Okay, you say and you will be born karma again. Is, karma is only in this life. The karma is translated in a very strange way. Those who are talking about karma, they do not know actually what that word means. Karma means an action which is not a reaction. All of our actions are reactions born out of our thinking. So karma means it's an action which is not a reaction. I don't know if I make myself clear. So you will never know the actions that are not reactions. It is one unitary movement, you see. So it cannot be separated. The actor and the action and the and whole the activity is one unitary movement. Like the, uh, the, the response to the stimulus, you know, stimulus and response is one unitary movement. They cannot be separated. You can take me to a laboratory and the scientist will tell you, this is, you see, the stimulus and the response of this body is the response to that stimulus. Yes. But actually it is one unitary movement. Both of them cannot be separated. The knowledge that is given to us helps us to separate these two things and accept their Okay. Logical statements. So you say karma is the continuity of An things? action which is not a reaction. Okay. So those actions are not the reactions. All of our actions are reactions. I don't know if I make myself That clear. makes us automatic beings. We, we are. And the spiritual state that they talked about is nothing but this. The unity that they talked about is very similar to this. You cannot separate yourself from what is happening out there and also what is happening there inside. Yeah, but that's an old Vedic idea. Thou are that. You and your environment are one. Yes, but it is only just a statement which does not operate in the lives of those people who are making such a set of statements, fooling themselves and fooling us all. Okay. You see, if unless, mind... unless you tell you uh, what is hunger, for example, you will never know that you are hungry 
unless you tell yourself that you are hungry. And uh, what is that hunger? The level of glucose goes down and demands for more glucose. So you translate that into that word hunger. Yeah. And then you see, the moment you ask the question, what to eat, we have created the problems. They are telling this food is good for you, those vitamins are necessary for you, that water is bad, drink the bottled water. So that's what I tell the people who drink so much of juices every day, it only makes your urine expensive. You mm -hmm. don't need all that. Okay, but then... And the, all the food that they say is good for your body is making your shit expensive. I'm sorry to put it in the most crudest of the languages, but that's a fact. I have known people who have lived, you see, on the, the mud. You see, once I appeared on a radio interview with a doctor in the United States of America, and during the course of that interview, I made a very assertive statement that you can live on sawdust and glue. And the interviewer asked me, why glue? I said, it adds some flavor to this sawdust, just the way you <laughs> add some, some curry powder to make your food very tasty, or soya bean sauce to the rice. And then the two top uh, nutritionists got on the line, that guy is saying something nasty, he doesn't know what he's talking about, he doesn't know anything about all these proteins. And after that, one old lady, 95-year-old lady, got on the line, and said, what he is saying is true. I was there in Leningrad during the Leningrad seas for four years. I was eating that kind of a food, even mud. Ever since I have moved to America, I'm eating organic food, then health food, everything, I'm always sick. <laughs> you see? So yeah. we are made mm -hmm. to believe that that is the kind of food that will keep mm -hmm. us. I am telling you, whether I'm 87 or 84, it doesn't matter, it depends upon who is uh, fixing the, the age, you see? You want to feel very young. Yeah, okay. And, uh, but say, it, it feels like you no, I have debunking, you're debunking debun our beliefs. Debunking in the sense that... No, no, I'm not interested, that's the wrong word. I'm not interested in asking people to do anything I do. And I don't ask them not to do anything I don't do. I have no interest in freeing anybody from anything. It is a matter So what is your role then in the world? Nothing, just to focus, spotlight, the situation exactly the way it is, not the way they say it should be and ought to be and must be. Just to point out. Do you I feel, have no interest in freeing okay. anybody from... But do you feel that media and religion and books and literature hypnotizes oh into... Yeah, they are into fooling us. Hypnotizing is a very... Strong word, but they're not fooling strong us. Word. They, they fool themselves, then they fool us all. But my point is, and this I am always emphasizing, I am not interested in condemning any of those teachers. They, they fool themselves, totally. And uh, they are fooling others. So I am not interested in saving those people from those con men, I call them, all including even Buddha, you see. And uh, he allowed themselves, you see, to, uh, you see, we allow them to fool us. And why do we allow them to fool us? Why do you allow us? We need security? No, we, 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 we think that uh, what they are saying is valid and true. They know what they are uh, saying. You know, when once everything was thrown out of my system, everything, not just the theosophical background, but the Hindu background, I did psychology, then I discovered that Freud was a stupendous fraud of the 20th century. As a student of psychology, 70 years ago, or even 75 years ago. And that surprised my professor from Cambridge University. How can you make such statements? Because that's what I see here. You see, what he's saying, he does not know what he's talking about. And when my book was published, you see, my conversation with so many people in America, the person who did uh, research in the archives of uh, Freud in England found that that guy falsified 49 case histories to establish himself as a great psychologist. And he knew what he was talking about, that professor. When he read that, my statement, which I made as a student, uh, when I was only 30, no, no, only 23 or 22 years old, that surprised him and he came to see me. How you could make such a statement? You see, because, you see, I knew that there was some, I met even... Okay, but I let's take it, you, you have... You said many of uh, Buddha, Freud. 
are there people that you admire? Not one genuine person on this planet. It is not that I, I, am, not cla- I, am, not, I am not claiming, just get this and get this straight, that I am the only one, that I am far superior to all those people that existed before me. All those who existed before me, all those who are there around us today, and all those who are yet to be born, they are all con men if they say that there is something that they can do to save you and to save mankind. Okay. Can we save? Is there a possibility there to no save ourselves? There is no reason for us to be saved at all. Okay. Why we are not ready to accept the world exactly the way it is? You see, is this all? The moment you ask that question, see, everything we are doing, everything we have done, accomplished, retained, achieved, is going to come to an end. That is what you call death. But death does not exist for this body. You are not going to be there when you are dead or when you become a corpse. Mm-hmm. Huh? You are not going there to, you are not going to be there to tell yourself that you are dead. And I am asserting even now, you have no way of telling yourself that you are alive. The fact that you are alive is something which cannot be experienced by you except through the knowledge that is passed on to us. You are breathing, your heart is uh, beating, your pulse is not, all that knowledge they are projecting on us and telling us that we are alive. So. Death is a definition. You cannot experience your own death. And even those who experience our death are not really experiencing what is called death, but the void created by the so-called death of a particular individual, the impossibility of carrying on the same kind of a relationship that they have been carrying on for years and years. It is the void that they are experiencing and call it death but not actually death can never be experienced. You see, millions and millions of long organisms live on this body. Millions. It's more useful dead than alive we are. Because of the insects, the even now, the mobile, the even, now even now, your physical eye cannot see. Millions of organisms are now crawling on this body. And once they took a picture and enlarged it and put it, I don't know whether it is Newsweek or Time magazine, as big as a cockroach. So our usefulness is for millions and millions of organisms that are living here and the fauna and the flora okay. inside of your body. Okay, so reality is indeed an illusion. Life is an illusion. There is no such thing as reality at all. It's a definition. Wow. And okay. even, even your Kant, I did the Western philosophy as part of my studies as a student of philosophy, he made an assertive statement that there is no such thing as reality. It was just a concept he arrived at, concluded, but it did not operate in his life. Well, what he, he tried to do in, in Critiques from Rainer Vernut was to, what I, the way I see it is, if you seal yourself in a steel barrel, you know, totally not communicating, not sensing anything, what would the, be left? The statement that he's making is born out of the same structure, that they are not ready to accept that, you see. And even as a student of Advaita Vedanta, it's very popular here, I did Advaita Vedanta. If there is such a thing as non-dual state, if there is any, that does not exist, you see. If there is any such thing as a non-dual state, it cannot be experienced. What you do not know, you cannot experience. So all these when mystical I, states that people talk, yes. or that they experience, that I experience, is an illusion too? It is, no, you know something about it. The knowledge that is passed on to us, yeah. from those people in whom you have a tremendous investment and believe that they are telling what they know is the one that is creating this, giving you this experience. Otherwise, okay. what a... you do not know, okay. you cannot experience. I even told Jay Krishnamurti, when he was talking of, you see, what is, you stop there. You see, beyond mind, you don't talk all that shit to, to me. I told him, I knew him very well, for years and years. and. Uh, All right, if there is any such thing as uh, non-dual state or where you have gone beyond mind, why the hell you are describing that state as love, bliss, beatitude, and immensity? That's a sales speech. You are selling your own particular brand of cigarettes, fooling us all and telling us that it is nicotine-free. But they are also cigarettes. I was not a nice guy with my best friend and who happened to be my teacher, we were brought up in the same atmosphere. <laughs> Negation of 
the mind. I can no, understand no, no, that no, no, some. No, no, no. The negation, you see, of, our of positive thinking. approach has failed us to reach our goal. You see? But, okay, so, so we you have invented a thing. You have invented a thing called negative approach, yeah. but the goal is a positive goal. The goal must go. What is the goal? Any goal, happiness, does not exist. And permanent happiness... Yes, but so there is no goal, there's no direction, no there's no reality. What, what are we? What is, you know, that question wouldn't arise at all. Your assumption that there is such a thing as, you see, is a realistic thing and the goal, some goal placed before us. You see, you are supposed to be a selfish man. Suppose, I'm not referring to you. I am but we are to, as human beings. Yes, and that selfishness is experienced mm. by me as selfishness because they are telling us that there is such a thing as a selfless state and mm. that they are free from selfishness. And so we take those words very seriously and begin to think that they are living a life which is free from selfishness. It is the demand to be, for whatever reason you want to be selfless, is the one that has created and perpetuating this. You are not doing anything to free yourself from selfishness because it doesn't exist. It is that demand to be selfless for whatever reason they want us to be okay. selfless. But so you basically say that what cogito ergo sum, huh? yes, the beginning of modern philosophy, yeah. cogito ergo sum, hmm. I think so I am, you Therefore, say that. If you don't think what the hell is. I studied Descartes, cogito ergo sum, and that fellow was pressured by, you see, the church at that time, and he. So he came up, and you said even that compromise. You see, okay. if, there is, if you don't, so think, if the mind, if you don't think, okay, where is that? And uh, those people who started the other way, like in India, I feel, I feel, so I am. Feeling also is a is a thought. You see, thoughts don't exist there, sir. It's only noise that is there, sound that is there. Nothing else is there, and that has. Uh, see, we have created the language. You say sound is there, frequency you mean? That you don't know unless you see, you separate the... No, the notes are the most important thing for us. You see, creating the space between the notes in a particular way, the way we are taught how to space those notes, created these thousands and thousands of languages. You teach me how to separate those notes. Sir. The music also is the same. There is nothing to music. Nothing. First time when I went to England, a friend of mine, I was not exposed or even bothered about listening to the Western music. I was only 21 years old. He dragged me to the Halbert Hall to listen to one of the most uh, famous concerts. I walked out in five minutes. I could not take it, you see, the Beethoven's Ninth Symphony or Fifth Symphony. But uh, I put very crude language, those people who try to be clever and make me believe that uh, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony is something extraordinary. Even the same in music. Okay, but now this sounds music like... Music is nothing, yes. Are there nice things in your life? Huh? Is there a difference between this code and a very dirty code? Yeah, but the, you, who says that this is fine? This is most expensive. But do you feel that? No, I don't feel. You don't care about it? No, I don't care. I don't want to walk naked to prove that I don't have any body consciousness like some of these uh, yeah, yeah. spiritual people. It's better to run, uh, you see... Some so nudist, there is a nudist thing. colony okay. so and live a sensual life, then to call it as uh, body consciousness is absent, to prove that you don't have any body, you have to walk naked in the streets. Uh, it is for their sake that I wear clothes. And what kind of clothes I wear? You walk through all those shops, they are telling you how you should dress yourself. Mm -hmm. What surprised me in England for the first time after so many years, all the men's wear pushed to the uh, ground, underground. And women, I never saw those things exhibited in the windows in Harrods. Would you believe that? <laughs> that surprised me most. I'm sorry. I, what are good. We talking so about? we are talking about are disease talking. to divinity, and and when, I feel like in a very empty space because you say everything you are is, saying is, that you are is not, not there. You are not in an empty space. If you are lucky to be freed from the stranglehold of all that is put in there. The question of space or living in a space doesn't exist. You are, what you are what the, is the state of mind if you are free of all the these fact, things? The, the fact that you are throwing that question at me 
is born out of the assumption that there is mind. something there which will remain after this is thrown out of your system. The throwing out of this is born out of that question, wanting to know what will be there, what you will be left with, is the extension of the same thing, is the projection of the same thing. Thoughtless state. So many people come and tell okay, me but if I that assume, they are living in a yeah, thoughtless state. If I assume that this reality then is a product of my thinking, so if I stop thinking, the reality stops, what is talking to each other here? Nothing. Just nice meeting you, bye-bye. Even that is born out of thought. Nice meeting you. So there is no purpose in life? The, the, why should there be any purpose? A living person would never ask the question, what will happen after my death? Is there anything beyond you? We are not living. A living thing does not, the body is not asking whether it will continue forever. We are asking the question because you want this. We are doing all these things. You and I will not be here tomorrow. We will be dead and gone. We are not there to tell ourselves, I did this, I did that. We interviewed, you are a famous man. And this useless guy you interviewed two times. And they are likely your interview everywhere. You see? And so, that is all that is left. Nothing else. Just, Nothing. Okay. Uh, the one question which we are asking ourselves, all that you have done, all that you have accomplished, all that you have attained, achieved, is coming to an end. In what is called death, you see? Is that all? There must be something that will continue. I will tell you something. But why don't we then massively say, there's the no reality, let's jump out of the window. No, or what? you don't even have to jump out of the window. That is to prove that there is no such thing reality to you and to others. What, what does it prove if you jump out of the window? It is not your body. You reduce me to a, an Extra. amoebe, a bacteria that just does his thing, ends his life sometime. And it's goes away. And then you see, this is the one that is immortal. Because it is maintaining the continuity of millions and millions of living organisms. That's all that nature is interested in. I know you will not accept what I'm saying. Or the well, uh, you are, you straight, are a let's talk the, about the world because you have very, out of this belief that everything is illusion, you have very strong statements. Belief, belief is a wrong word. Even belief is a wrong word. No, you uh, see, why I assert that is, there is only a belief and there is no believer. You see, you, you are what you call is a belief. If that belief comes to an end, you as you know yourself, you as you experience yourself, will come to an end. And thereby the belief comes to an end. So, and so you have got to replace that belief with another belief. I know uh, so many people, millions, not, I'm sorry, that's an exaggeration, thousands and thousands of people in every part of the world pass through the portals of my residences, in America, in Australia, in India, here, in Europe, everywhere. And... Uh, there came a time when I found out that this is useless. I've been trying to tell them that there is nothing to get from me because I'm not going to give anything to you. And I used to add, you're not going to get anything from anybody because there is nothing to get. So... Not even from the inner self, from the inner... Nothing. It is an extraordinary intelligent thing that is living its own life in its own way. Something extraordinary, you can't imagine. And we think that we know how to treat that body, how to take care of that body, what to do with that body. That's why one of my commandments, it is not put on the internet. There are thousands and thousands of links to my uh, website or whatever you want to call yeah. it. What, 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 by the way, what is the website? I don't even remember. UG Krishnamurti yes, you dot com or dot org? What? Dot net, okay. I don't know, but anyway, you see... We'll put it up. Thousands and thousands, not hundreds even. You understand? They link to you because you seem they, like the nihilism... No, no, they don't call me a nihilist. Einstein and UG in one link. And uh, these are the two greatest destroyers of the 20th century. Einstein from the West and UG Krishnamurti from the East. And then... The, uh, yeah, but the funny thing is you destroy, but you don't no, I'm not put anything in its place. You give us emptiness. I'm not destroying. I'm not interested in destroying anything. That is the way you are putting it. I'm not interested in destroying anything. What would I gain by destroying anything? So, this is all that I'm saying. Only Krishnamurti's widows, Rajneesh's widows, 
and then uh, the divorces of all the spiritual teachers mm -hmm. now you have more westerners going to india claiming that they are enlightened people i'm very happy about it and trying to enlighten the people in india <laughs> <laughs> i'm very glad one thing that i am very happy about is all these westerners the claimants to enlightenment are going to india and trying to enlighten people not the other way around okay. all of them Good. Coming here. Let's go to a little bit of, of, of practical things in the world because you have, you, your opinions are, are very, for me, worthwhile in debunking our belief systems. Yes, that's what you do. I am not debunking anything. Okay, well, I, because I'm not for me, interested. you're debunking yes, my belief system. Yes, but systems. I'm not trying to I say, I tell you that they must be replaced with another. No, uh, no, you say just do away. They're no, you are not going to do it. It cannot be, you say, an action, voluntary action on your part. You see, they put me off on a merry-go-round. I was sick and tired. And then I didn't have the guts to jump off. Because I thought that I would be killed or I would be hurt tremendously. I was just thrown off. I got up and walked away. I'm not going to tell you, you jump off, nothing will happen to you. Because I didn't have the guts, how can I tell you? How it happened, why it happened, when it happened, that is a cartoon, you know that. Has anything happened? I don't know. I just walked away. There's so not I'm, even a God I can call to and say, get me out of this illusion? Why do you need God to get out of the illusion? God is invented. I knew we have taken away reality, now we no, take no, away no, God. No, 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 I tell all these atheists, you see, if you are really finished with God, you are not interested in freeing anybody from their belief in God. You are finished. And why, if there is a God, why the hell do you have to convert people into believing in God. All right, if there is a God, why the hell you have to produce all those ridiculous books and talk of cosmological, teleological, ontological proofs of the existence of God? I want to know. He's singularly incapable of telling you that I'm here. If he's there, if he's so compassionate, if he's so all-loving, why would he be on our side? He would be on the side of the people suffering out there. You understand that? By creating organizations, you are not going to solve the problem. You see, all those institutions, even Mother Teresa, I call her a bitch, you see. She was a lesbian bitch, it seems. It was there on the, on the BBC, Secret Lives of the People. And uh, so, why you want to perpetuate the misery of those people? You are, communism is not the answer. Political institutions are not going to, because I am not interested. Okay. But so I want in that way, you could say, we, these days we are concerned with something called terrorism in the world. Yes, yeah. uh, People going crazy, why? making bombs about themselves, flying into... But why are you sending people to the battlefields, knowing very well that if you don't succeed in killing the enemies, you will get killed? And then you create monuments and statues for those people. Why you are... You think God is on our side? If there is a God, he should be on the side of those people who are suffering. Miserable people. And you think God, uh, in God we trust. You know, you remember during the Second World War, the Germans said God is our co-pilot. And the British also said the same thing, God is our co-pilot. And those who are on this, <laughs> the co-pilots of the British, in, it was not Britain that helped to win the war, it was Russia. They paid the heaviest price, you know that? Yeah. We are not ready to accept that, you see, but anyway, and I say often, very often, that, uh, uh, you know, the Hitler destroyed all the empires. You see, unfortunately, he created the worst of all the empires we have in our midst today, that is the United States of America. Why you are condemning? You see, I don't do anything to destroy anything, as far as I'm concerned. I am not uh, interested in condemning anybody who is destroying, because it is destroying our status quo. We don't want to lose anything. I told the leaders of India, you erase the middle class people there in India. The only benefit that uh, the people have been benefited in India after India's independence are the middle class people. You understand? Yes. Huh? And uh, the I was Dravidas, born, the low class, uh, the, they the are still there. They're still 70 there. percent of the people are as miserable as uh, ever before. And so these people, you know, now they opened their gates and then this stuff from uh, America and you have as if you don't have oranges and drinking orange juice, they drink uh, Tropicana orange juice uh, imported from the United States of America. Why? 
Why do they have to do it? Only the middle class people. So erase the middle class people. The rich people, you see, anything. I was born into a very wealthy family. I didn't have to bother about anything I wanted, I could have had. So that was not, I have not in any way been benefited by India becoming a free country. Not that I wanted the British to continue forever. I knew that uh, I somehow I never thought that the British Empire would come to an end during my lifetime or even the lifetime of my great-grandchildren. For that, you must thank Hitler. And they say that he killed six men. Are you Jewish or something? No, I am so, considered to be... I think there's Jewish blood in many of us. Yes, so I, th me. I, I think uh, they say that I'm uh, anti-Semitic, which I am not. You see, in the Tel Aviv library, amongst these uh, things, they put my stuff, number three. And the Jewish guys complained, how can you put this anti-Semitic guy in a prominent oh, yeah, place? But they say you're anti-Semitic because you not. say the historical role of Hitler in a wider perspective that he brought to an end many of the previously existing uh, Reich, yeah, like, like, right. like uh, the, so the my, British Empire, my the, count, the My German. counter question to the American sea is that you killed, uh, how many, 60 million Red Indians? Huh? The American you, Indians, yes. American Indians. Do you know what? Uh, just before uh, he went out of office, where Clinton appeared on a stage and brought a 90-year-old Japanese guy. That was very interesting. And they took away. He was in the concentration camp. There was a concentration camp in the United States of For, America. Yes. Yes. And they took away all his properties. He apologized for the way they treated these people and put them in the concentration camp and denied them the basic things, the way they took away all their properties. He did not return them to those guys. And they want, you see, the Swiss banks to return all the money that the Jewish guy put in their banks. Why should they do it? And why not uh, you do it? And he also apologized for the way they treated the Negroes and Negresses in that country. And he also apologized for the way they killed thousands and thousands of Red Indians. What a, uh, I, I was uh, ready to use a shit uh, <laughs> talk it was. They do nothing. You see, they uh, apologize. Apologies are seldom of any, and uh, excuses any are of no value. I'm sorry, I'm not impressed by that. You know, I don't believe any other political systems. I was there in Russia in 1960. I blasted that country. The only reason I praised them was you are very successful in keeping all those Western nations in their tracks and with all their might, they could not destroy you. And that Garby... Okay. <laughs> now, it seems you are denying the, the true existence of many things, but there seems that you feel that there's something like balance. No, it doesn't exist. As you say, Hitler kept, there, there's a balance, there's all these... No, no, I didn't uh, see. that's why I say that uh, India should be grateful to Hitler and not to Gandhi. See, this I point out, they agree with me. In the name of non-violence, more people were killed. You see, men, women and children than uh, what the British has did at that time. So, even Gandhi didn't have the intelligence, basic intelligence to understand what I was emphasizing. And I said both violence and non-violence spring from the same source. Okay, but Anything that is born out of thought is destructive. Okay, but at, at this day and age, we are really getting the results of the separation of the Muslim and uh, Hindu countries yeah. in India. It seems that what happened with Gandhi and Nehru, kind of the separation in Pakistan and India, and now they're still fighting about the Ayodhya yes, Ram I, Temple. Yes, I know that. You see, then they ask me, what do you think of this? Why are you killing uh, Muslim women? And Muslim women should kill the Hindu women. Yeah. You see, they are part of the country. It's not that I will do any such thing. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be a civil war. Supposing I don't identify myself with the rest of India. I come from the south. I have my state to be separated. Mm -hmm. And then if this I... Is your state, Kerala? No, but... <laughs> <laughs> Madras, and Madras. I was actually on Andhra, but I grew up in Madras. Yeah. I spent more time in Madras than anywhere else. You see, so I want to have an independent country. And there will always be somebody who will be promised that he will get the presidentship of that country. And so killing is inevitable. They are going to kill a lot of people who want uh, to see themselves from the rest of India. I don't believe in the uh, oneness of the country. I don't believe in their language. I don't even uh, touch the North Indian food, <laughs> you see. It doesn't mean that I will do anything to destroy anything. So killing is the one way 
of resolving the problems and we are not going to succeed. This thing I am emphasizing. Before we started, you are not going to win the war against terrorism and you are not going to win the war against drugs. So I point out why the hell you are eating potatoes, tomatoes and olives. They have nicotine. It's better to smoke than to eat potatoes, tomatoes, and aubergine. So aubergine means eggplant. Yeah. And it's better to take opium than eating all these salads, particularly lettuce. We are not ready to admit that kind of a thing. And you condemn this. One who has never smoked will never condemn anybody who is smoking. One who has not touched wine or even, it's the smell, you see, even the smell. Yeah. You see, we'll never condemn alcoholics at all. I don't. They can drink anything they want. I will even supply them most expensive wine bottles, which they can't get anywhere, through the help of a pontiff. <laughs> so I will, you see, one who has never touched that will never condemn. I'm telling you. If there is any... Don't you place yourself outside normal I am very much human... Part, I am very much part. You are not. You are interested in changing yourself into something else. You are interested in changing the world. And it is the demand or the promise to create heaven on this earth is the one that is turning this into hell. You want... You, you see... No, no, human being, but that, that's interesting. So you say, by not wanting to change anything, mm -hmm. I'm in fact one with everything. Yeah, you know you are not, you cannot... Uh, but you become one with everything? Exactly the way it is. If people tell me that what you are saying is very dangerous, you are undermining, you see, the, the status quo of this society. My friend, Mr. Mahesh, but with the author of my biography, he visited uh, South Africa. He asked me, what's your message? I said, kill Nelson Mandela. What? I the people. So he had a long uh, chat with him. And they talked about me. He said, U.G. Krishnamurti is the most subversive man that has ever appeared on this planet. But anyway, give all, his, all your books. I will read when I retire. When once they get into the seat of power, they do exactly the same thing that they protested against. So if you want to do something to the Palestinians, kill Arafat. <laughs> you see, he's killing more people. Not that I will do it. You see, he is doing exactly the same thing that he protested against. It does not mean that I uh, support status quo. The things are constantly changing and we are not ready to go along. Even in our lives, we want change. Okay. But for me, I every time I talk with this you... This is supposed to be an interview, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. But every time I talk with you, it is like you take my beliefs, which is reality, which is politics, which is this and that and that, you break it down to nothing. I feel no, then... No. Um, no, I don't think I will ever succeed in that. I have no illusion. I, 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 <laughs> that's not a thing whether you succeed. I'm but not that's interested what I feel. in taking away. What would I gain? I'm just pointing out the absurdity. Yeah, but you're like the black hole of our uh, planetary knowledge. Like whatever I I ask you about religion, so why do we about you, you kind of say, the, well, why? Pst, and it goes so why, in a black why, hole. Why do, you, why do you take very seriously what the scientists are telling us? They say that there is chaos. And so one joker said, there is order in the universe. And somewhere along the line, the scientists find that there is no order, but there is chaos. All right. There is chaos. And a third joker comes along and says, there is order and chaos in the same frame. Like... The scientists are no different from the metaphysicians. We admire them, like them, because they have given all these things to us, the technical knowledge, which has helped us to do whatever we want to do. But that does not mean that there is anything. Why they are changing? They are all metaphysicians discussing these things and fooling themselves and fooling us all. They project their own ideations and mentations on what they are looking at. And we have tremendous... Uh, Faith in them. We believe that they know a lot more. They know nothing. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, what okay. is left? Uh, beauty. beauty. Is there beauty? No, it's essential. It's better, this is what I say, to look at the bouncing breasts of a pretty girl than to look at the sunrises and sunsets. Both are the same. If both are the same, if you reject that one, looking at the sunrises and sunsets and the beauty of the flowers, 
and listening to the river and watching the clouds, this will go. That's what I'm saying. We are not ready to accept the actual facts of our existence. A mother who loves the child so much, why the mother beats the child? And you condemn that as anger. It is not anger. It is not anger. Anger just flashes like that. And it is not there anymore. Why the child beat sent by the mother cries and then the mother cries afterwards it is because the beating is the result of the impossibility of making the child do the things the way the she mother wants. wants the child to do you give a wrong name to that you, you have a very beautiful wife everybody is making passes at her you should be proud very proud that you have a pretty girl as your girlfriend or your wife why do you call it jealousy, envy? Why not? If she walks out on you, you must be prouder. You are, <laughs> <laughs> you are dealing with the wrong things. Call it jealousy, call it envy, call it anger. It is not there. I'm sorry. Okay. Is magic there? Is magic All there? The is this what the Theosophical Society started out with? The this. other world and saying what we a, can influence what, the future? What, what, what about Sai Baba? Well, they say he does magic. No, he's, a magi he's not ready to accept that he's a magician. He's a sleight-of-hand magician. Yes, they showed it on the TV, BBC, somebody handing over. You know, he is creating problems for me. You see, Sai Baba tells those people who have lived with him for 20 years, 15 years, squeeze them dry, take away the money, and tell him that there is one guy there who is a real enlightened man, go there, and he will help you. All right. And then uh, they come and cry to me, very rich women. I didn't even have the money to come here, uh, hiring a taxi. She was crying. I said, all right, I'll pay. I went out and asked him, how much do you want? 600 rupees. Why, that was a lot of money from his place to where I lived in Bangalore. And then I converted that into dollars and felt very comfortable. And next day she came. And then you see this uh, the police were after my friends because uh, something strange happened. You see, there were, he is, they say he is uh, um, a gay guy. And then uh, he, he called four boys. He was trying to make fun. And they said, we are going to expose you. This is all there in the news, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, he called the police. The police uh, uh, killed the four out of five boys on the spot with the why they were called, whether they were threatening to kill him or not. And so one fellow ran away. And then you see, they finally tracked his place, went inside, and they saw my photo and all my books. And, and so they came to you? They, no, I was not there. I was in America. They were calling me, you see. And they searched. They thought that I inspired those boys to kill him. I'm the last man to inspire anybody to kill anybody. And so they did research, and they uh, went books and they found two interesting statements I made in the course of my conversation. Mm -hmm. And one thing I made that you see, if he is in the know of divine laws of nature, it is necessary for him to tell all these scientists who are discussing the laws of nature and they are all used by us to destroy life and property. So it is very necessary for him, if he is in the know of divine laws, to tell them how to Yep. find out the real loss of nature and, and with them. And second thing, I made a statement which was not very acceptable to them. And uh, I, I said he was uh, materializing Swiss and American, I mean, Japanese churches. Mm -hmm. And when Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister of India, stopped the smuggling into that country, switched over to the watches made in India. <laughs> oh, my God. So you're saying Sai Baba created or magically watches and... But when the supply from Switzerland stopped, he used other things. No, okay, I'm, so he's, I'm you say he's an against, imposter. I'm not against it, you see. I'm no. not interested in saving any one of them who comes okay. to see me. But you mentioned divine law. If there it, are any, you didn't... Uh, if there are any laws. Do you are, believe there no, are any? No, there are no divine laws. There are no divine laws. We don't know much, and whatever we have discovered so far have been used by us, and still we are using to destroy every form of life on this planet. So you don't say it's impossible there are divine laws, but definitely we don't use them. We, we don't know if they have. What is that? What is the point? Even if we call them divine laws, we will use them for destructive purposes only. 
Why should the uh, God, if there is a God or a divine power, should be on our side? I want to know. I don't know. I don't care. I never needed that guy in my life. If he's there, he's there. If I don't need him. I know what I want. I know how to get what I want. <laughs> you see. <laughs> and you say, I, me, I'm on my own. I don't need any oh, I need reality. Money. I, I need only money to survive in this world. Because otherwise there is no way. You see, if I, even if I am ready to eat your apple trees, mm. fruits from your apple oranges, you have to pay they this. belong to you or to the state. Yeah. If I steal, I am hungry and you will put me in prison. So, that is all. So, I need money to survive in this world. That's the be all and end all of our existence. But so you don't, don't need religion, you don't need law, I don't need you don't need drugs. How to survive? I didn't want even to educate myself. Why the hell do I have to go through all these educational institutions and study 250 natural orders and the names of all those who trees? What for? To teach that again to the students and make a living? There must be some other way of making a living. My grandfather was very rich. So I said, you sweat and give me the money. I don't have to work. Why should I pass the examinations? Why should I have degrees? Not much left. That's the main story. Yuji, no, no, Krishnamurti, you, every time I talk with you, you leave me with nothing. I would call you the big black hole of our knowledge. Everything that we can dream up as, as being relevant, as having meaning, goes into Yuji's black hole and Not disappears. Well, in, in, the, in the black hole I that you talk see, about. I don't see any black hole. Well, for me, you are. <laughs> you are like... There where our, what you call illusions, disappear. I don't know what's behind the black hole, neither do you. But, but uh, I don't see any black hole there. You see a black hole. It's no, but all... whatever I see, you make that go very, up in smoke. Th there is a, uh, that's a very comforting thing for you to believe that uh, I am a black hole. And you <laughs> <laughs> Even the belief of black hole isn't there. We've spoken with Yuji Krishnamurti and... Um, 50 years he came to Holland, and about 50 years he did away with his being, yeah, being associated with the Theosophical Society. And with everything that India and stood for. Everything that India stood for, and I, I believe every, everything that everything that the Western world for stands has for. has come up with. So everything was thrown out of my system. I am a very lucky guy. I have been freed from the stranglehold of the human thought. And I cannot be of any help to anybody because you don't need any help. Wow. To feel free from the need to be. Hmm? To, to be free. Yes. And that to be free one? even from the need to be free. free. That's a paradox that's, and yet it sounds like a paradox. That's, uh, that's to feel fact. free from the need to be free. There, there is nothing there wow. to be free from. Okay. All right. On that thank note, you for... Thank you very much. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, I don't know what we said. Okay. Wow.